Good Sunday morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm your moderator, John Becker. We'll get to our guests and my colleague, John North, in just a moment. First, a little lesson. This is a new map of Knox County representing the state house districts in our community. What we're going to focus on this morning is this one in blue. It's District 18 and you can see this is the Tennessee River, so it stretches to the south and it also moves into parts of Bearden and Cedar Bluff area. This is the blue area. Looks like an amoeba, but this is the new drawing for the new District 18. Who isn't running in that district? Well, State Representative Eddie Manis decided to not run. So there are two candidates on the Republican side for his seat. John, before we get to them, just a moment on this map. It was redrawn as is policy by the state legislature after the census. It was redrawn and uh, South Knoxville suddenly found itself in the 18th versus the 13th and a mutual colleague of ours who's heavily involved in politics says he would not want to meet that district in a dark alley because it's kind of menacing. All right, let's get to our candidates on the Republican side and they are Janet Testerman and Elaine Davis, two well-known people in our community and we are glad to have both of you with us. Let's start with a question that we always ask and that is, why are you run running and what is the background you have that makes you the best candidate? And Elaine, we'll start with you. Well, thank you. Good morning. I appreciate y'all inviting us on today. Uh, so I've been involved in the Republican Party for 14 years now and have stepped down as vice chair of the Knox County Republican Party to run for this seat. Um, I got involved in politics not because of anything that I thought would ever happen to me. My son was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when he was age one. And so when he got to be about school age, we were concerned about how he was gonna be taken care of at school. And so when I went to our elected officials to try to help get resolution for that, um, unfortunately, in a lot of ways, there wasn't the political will to resolve that issue. And so it just caused me to step forward and fight for my son and be an advocate for him. And I've continued to be that, be an advocate for our community. And I'd like to do that for our state. Thank you, Elaine. Janet Testerman, why are you running and what qualifications do you have to make a good state representative? Well, thank you, John and John, um, but I am excited. Uh, I have, uh, I currently serve on Knoxville City Council and I have, I really love being a public servant and serving the people of this community. Uh, I have long been involved in many of our communities worthy causes and uh, in different positions, different uh, organizations and really to bring that experience. I've been a small business owner. I currently run uh, the largest municipal animal welfare organization in the state and to really bring that experience to the state uh, to be a voice of reason, but to be a good steward for members of Knox County and uh, the residents of District 18. Candidates, uh, Janet and Elaine, if I may ask you, just sort of staying along that kind of same line of topic, can you share with us some of your ideas, specific ideas of how you'd like to make Tennessee better if you're elected to the 18th State House? And Janet, let's stay on you and then we'll go to Elaine. Okay. There are, you know, there are a couple things, there are a lot of things really that I'm incredibly passionate about. Uh, again, I go back to being a small business owner and uh, to me, small business uh, line the main streets of uh, our, our cities and our towns and they are the backbone of who we are. And there's one thing, um, I think there's some opportunity to look at taxes around small business. I feel like that uh, their uh, taxes sometimes are disproportionately allocated. And as we know, especially through COVID, that, uh, you know, our businesses are struggling and many have gone away that we will never see again. And so I really think to uh, be able to look at that so we are not unfairly burdening, burdening our small businesses, our mom and pops, and really uh, impeding any opportunity for growth and, and take care of them. And I'm also a huge proponent of mental health. Uh, I equate mental health to cancer. If you haven't been diagnosed, you have a friend or family member that has, or you have an acquaintance, um, we are in a perfect storm right now uh, with needs up and resources down. And, you know, we've seen 51% more suicides uh, among 
the uh, four major cities in the state. And, um, you know, we, we really need to address it and uh, really make that a priority. Thank you, Janet. Elaine, your, your chance now. What are some specifics that you'd like to fix or your vision? Well, so I'm incredibly grateful that the legislature this year has decided to make to expand really the sales tax holiday for the month of August. I think that's important because that impacts a lot of families and gives them some of that tax relief, especially here locally when we know that the city of Knoxville has raised uh, taxes. And then also with the property assessments, that is going to also create a, a higher tax burden on our citizens. So I think it's important that we do everything we can to try to bring those tax dollars back to our community. One thing I'm incredibly grateful for that the legislature did this year was that they gave teachers a $154 million raise. And then also they're investing $500 million in career and technical education across the state. So for me, education is a priority. I think that we need to make sure that families have choices in their educational experience, whatever they need and feel is best for their student to be successful and to go on and, and be a, uh, a good citizen afterwards. And then also uh, healthcare is a, is a priority for me as well. And then roads and infrastructure. We do not have any sort of road debt in our state. That's something that we're very proud of. And road, you know, our motto is agriculture and commerce. And so in order to have that commerce, you gotta have good infrastructure. So those are priorities that I'd like to see continue and maintain. And then obviously, uh, keep cutting taxes, <laughs> bring Let, it back home. Let's talk about one of those specifics that you mentioned, and that is school choice. Uh, there is a debate in this community and really across the state about how much we should invest in charter schools. Should we take money that is going to public education now and move more of it into charter schools and give parents that opportunity? Number one, Elaine, do you favor that, yes or no? And number two, what do you think of the current charter school effort underway in the state? Should it be expanded dramatically? Well, first of all, we need to see how it works in those two counties in Williamson to see how it, how it works. But absolutely, I'm in favor of choice. I think that with COVID, that showed us as parents that we should be the experts on our kids and how best to suit their educational needs. Uh, for me, for my son, uh, all of my kids graduated from public schools, but my son who had type 1 diabetes, when he was in kindergarten and first grade, we homeschooled him. And uh, that was just due to the fact that we were concerned about his health care at school and making sure that his blood sugars were good so that that way he could concentrate on his studies. And so I think that, that we need to make sure that we're restoring that relationship between parents, educators, teachers, and really doing what's best for the students to be successful. Uh, I'm incredibly grateful that we are having a new funding formula, the TISA funding formula, which is absolutely uh, investing so much more into our school system, and it's really putting dollars to the student instead of, um, I kind of equate it to, with my son with his insulin, before he had an insulin pump, you had to match the food with the medication. And so now with an insulin pump, you can match the medicine with the food. And so it's, all, it's very similar in, edu in the education formula that they're doing. You can actually take those dollars and whatever those needs are for that student, you can then allot those dollars. There's a base uh, salary of a, or a base amount. And then, you know, if they have some sort of reading difficulty or if they have, just like my son did, with any sort of health issue, you can then take tax dollars and really help support that student and make okay. sure that, that they have the supportive students services around them to make sure that they're successful. All right, so what does Janet Tasterman think of charter schools? Hang with us. We're gonna take a quick break on Inside Tennessee. We'll pick up on that question right after this.